Yeah, hi guys. Today we're talking about she tasks, and yes, it's not she as in the cat's mother, she. We're talking about uh, she in terms of the South Australian curriculum uh, that uh, features in any of the uh, stage one or stage two science subjects that you might do. Uh, and it's often um, brought up even in the in the middle years, year seven, eight, nine, and ten science. Uh, you might have heard about these these she tasks, these she concepts. So uh, today we're talking about uh, she in terms of the South Australian curriculum, which stands for science as a human endeavor. Uh, and it sounds fancy and it sounds complicated, but uh, all it's looking at is the interactions between uh, science and society uh, because you know there's there's lots of uh, you know how has has a, how has a science driven uh, society you know to get better technology to get better phones to have better vehicles to be able to go overseas in a jumbo jet um, cures for diseases and vaccines and things like that uh, so so science has certainly influenced and, and, and affected um, our society and our lives uh, but also our society and our lives will influence and drive the science uh, so the science that is able to uh, progress the most is the one that's getting the most influence from the politicians from the public from the uh, science, uh, scientific journalists uh, things like that and so uh, it's your assignment is going to be all about that interplay between how um, how the science and the society interacts uh, and there's four main she concepts uh, and, and so so basically there's a lot within each one of these and we'll unpack them all uh, in turn but uh, they they fit or they'll, they'll fit into one of these four categories and in your introduction to your science as a human endeavor task you need to identify uh, the the she concepts that you're going to be talking about in in your essay uh, is going to fit into you know which of these categories uh, and the SACE board say well your essay or your report needs to be based on at least one of these but you can um, come up with points uh, about that interaction between science and society from uh, all four if you want to uh, but we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, when we look at the individual task that's another presentation I just want to give you a, a, an understanding of what the she concepts are so there's communication and collaboration development influence and applications and limitations uh, so looking at each one in turn communication and collaboration is uh, how the scientists are communicating with each other uh, and so you know here's the scientist uh, and you've got peer review process that appears being other scientists um, that are reviewing that scientists work um, so that's uh, collaboration that's communication between um, you know within the scientific community itself um, there's communication uh, between the scientists and the media um, and that communication is going to happen between the media and the public um, and like, obviously the the public when it comes to voting time is going to influence the government and the government is going to influence uh, the public so you know this could be Professor uh, Nicholas Spiria um, who's you know coming up with uh, policies that are going to influence the public, uh, but the uh, and 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 the media is going to influence the public, and and this is going to you know the the government might put uh, might offer um, you know scientific grants for people who find um, vaccines. Uh, so so basically um, the the influence goes all around and within. Uh, and so if you're if what you're talking about is is honing in on one of these interactions then it fits under the communication and collaboration bracket uh, 
And, and so yes, these are these two are the the elaborations for that section. Then you've got um, development, uh, and development is where you're looking at the technology or the um, the methods or the models uh, that were developed that enable the next stage in the process. So you're really looking at like a, a, a timeline or um, how you know the development of if you look at this um, this really old microscope the development of the glass and then of a lens and of improved lenses would have led to the development of um, you know better microscopes and then you know they would have been able to see the microbes better which would have led to this new this uh the current technology so so really when you're looking at um she tasks you're you're typically taking the perspective of uh, a a new technology or a new development in math science engineering biology chemistry so you're looking at this this new uh piece of technology or this new piece of science and so with the development um category you're looking at uh, you know what were the precursors that have um, you know of in technology that were able to lead to to this later development to where we are now, so to speak. So you're not you wouldn't be looking at microscopes as such. Um, you're looking at the modern technology that has led to our current day technology. What were the precursors? Uh, influence is is similar. Um, and these are the two elaborations for for influence. But what you're looking at is it's a a bit broader. So um, you know, is the has the field of engineering influenced um, the field of biology or the field of chemistry influenced this particular technology that you're looking at in biology uh, or or the mathematics uh, or have there been uh, social influences? That have led to uh, that has shaped the technology that you're exploring in your assignment, or has there been economic pressures that have led to this technology, um, cultural pressures, ethical considerations? What have been the influences um, from society that have driven the science? And if you are if you are having a close look at that, then your uh, your she concept that you're looking at fits under the influence banner. Now you you really need to think about what banners, what banner or banners does my do my she concepts fit under? Uh, and finally, like I said, the applications and limitations one. Uh, there's three elaborations here, um, and it looks complicated, but actually it's it's pretty straightforward um, because it's it's looking at you know what are the possible outcomes the unexpected consequences uh you know what you know what monitoring what assessment what what are the risks what are the opportunities for innovation uh, what are the environmental impacts the social impacts the economic impacts uh you know what what solutions might this come up with but what are the um you know why is this technology still in its inf infancy what what's it what's it missing Where's its uh, limitation? So it's you can really sink your teeth into that. Um, and like I said, I just wanted this to be a short video to summarize what the concepts were. Just going to say, so in stage one biology, you're looking at a 1,000 word essay or a six minute presentation, you know, similar to this. Um, but, you know, you might think, whoa, that's, that's a lot. That's a big essay or something. But once you start on it, um, that 1,000 words, or that six minutes will go really, really quickly. Uh, it's going to be split up into an introduction. You'll be talking about the biological and scientific backgrounds. Uh, like I said, this will be covered in more detail when I introduce the actual task, but I um, but I thought I'd just give you a quick overview. And then um, you have your three concepts uh, that fit into the, um, the one of the four categories, and then you have a conclusion. Um, and, and just on those three concepts, they might be three points. Um, the task says you, the task will say you need to hit at least one of the she concepts uh, could be influenced, but uh, you you don't need to do uh, one whole elaboration. You could just be talking about 
how the, uh, the knowledge um, has social implications or economic implications. Anyway, I'll just leave it as that.